Hello everyone, now we're moving on to some more complex theory and in this lecture we're going to cover rotation matrices. So these are extremely fundamental to all the mathematics going forward. So here's our roadmap. We're starting with rotation matrices. How can we describe the relative orientation between reference frames? And here's an example of a typical problem. We have an environment with several actors involved. A camera, a robot, an object we would like to maneuver or manipulate with our robot, and we have some sort of global reference frame. So given the following rotations or orientations, that is the orientation from the inertial frame to the camera, the orientation from the camera to the object, the orientation from the inertial frame to the base, and the orientation from the base to the end effector, the question is, what is the orientation from the end effector to the object? So first of all, let's go about constructing a reference frame. Here I have the unit vectors x and y. So being unit vectors, the norm, Euclidean norm of x hat is 1, and the Euclidean norm of y hat is 1. Furthermore, these vectors x and y are orthogonal, meaning they are at 90 degrees to each other. So if I do the transpose of x on y, this will be 0. Then we can say that these vectors x and y are orthonormal, meaning that they're both orthogonal and normalized. Now let's consider the rotation between two reference frames. So suppose we rotate a second reference frame 2 about a unit circle by an angle of psi. The question is then, how can we describe reference frame 2 with respect to reference frame 1 mathematically? So you can see here I've split the second reference frame into its x component and y component and use some trigon trigonometry to express it relative to frame 1. So we can express the axes of frame 1 as functions of axes of frame 2. That is, x1 is x2 cos psi minus y2 sine psi. So we have x2 cos psi minus y2 sine psi. And then we have y1 is equal to x2 sine psi plus y2 cos psi. And then we can move these coefficients into a matrix, and we have the vector of the second reference frame, x2 and y2. And the coefficients here in this matrix. So we define the rotation matrix from 1 to 2 as r, 1 to 2 as a function of psi, is this matrix here. Cos psi, sine psi, sine psi, and cos psi. And you'll notice that the two column vectors contain the components of x2 and the components of y2. So this matrix here forms our rotation between two reference frames in 2D. So the transpose of a rotation matrix is equivalent to its inverse. Let's multiply the rotation matrix by its transpose. We have r times r transposed is these two matrices here, which when we solve the mathematics, we end up with this single matrix. And you will notice that the diagonal elements from trigonometry will be 1. And the off-diagonal elements will cancel each, out, cancel each other out to be 0. So what we're left with is the identity matrix. But we also know that a matrix by its inverse gives the identity matrix. And therefore, the inverse of a rotation must be its transpose. This means that the rotation matrix is orthogonal. And this makes sense because the column vectors we defined to be orthogonal at the beginning. So x transpose on y is 0. So the reverse of a rotation matrix is also its inverse. So the rotation from frame 1 to 2 is given by r, 1 to 2. And the rotation from 2 to 1, the inverse, is given by r, 1 to 2 transpose, which we learnt previously. And therefore, the rotation from 1 to 1 is given by r, 1 to 2, by 2 to 1. And notice that the diagonal elements here match up. Which is r, 1 to 2, by r, 1 to 2 transpose, which we learnt is the identity matrix. 
So the Euclidean norm of a rotation matrix is one. Recall that our rotation matrix is a concatenation of unit vectors. That is, we have R with X hat and Y hat in the column vectors, which is cos psi, negative sine psi, sine psi, cos psi. The Euclidean norm of R is the largest norm of its column vectors. So the Euclidean norm of R will be the maximum of either x hat or y hat. And when we expand these out, we simply get cos squared psi plus sine squared psi, which we square root. And we know that from trigonometry, this is 1. So the Euclidean norm of the rotation matrix must be 1. And again, this is self-evident, as by definition, we said that these unit these axes are unit vectors with a magnitude of 1. So the determinant of a rotation matrix is 1. So we take the determinant of R, which gives us cos psi by cos psi minus sine psi times negative sine psi, which is just cos squared psi plus sine squared, squared psi, which we know is 1. And so the interpretation of this is that the area or volume bounded by the axes remains constant. So here you see frame 1 and frame 2 rotated, and the vectors containing the area remain the same size. So the area or volume within these remains the same. So the determinant of 1 means that the area is scaled by 1. So a rotation matrix is in the special orthogonal group. And the special orthogonal group has the following properties. R times R transposed is equal to R transposed times R, which is the identity matrix. The Euclidean norm of this matrix is 1, and its determinant is 1. So if R is an n by n matrix with the above properties, then we say that R is in the special orthogonal group of n dimensions. So an important property of the rotation matrix is invariance under rotation. So if we rotate a vector B such that A is equal to R times B, then its magnitude will remain the same. That is, the magnitude of A will equal the magnitude of B. So let's go ahead and prove this property. So we take the squared of the Euclidean norm that is given here, and we expand it out. That'll be A transposed A equals B transposed R transposed RB. And we know from our previous proof that this will give the identity matrix. And therefore we have a transpose A will equal, will equal B transpose B, and hence the norm of A equals the norm of R times B, which is equal to the norm of B. And again, this is really obvious if we look at rotating a vector around a circle, as in the diagram here. So what are the implications to invariance under rotation? Suppose we have an observer observing a vehicle traveling with a velocity V, and its velocity is in reference frame A then we can rotate this for observer B. So the velocity with respect to frame B is a rotation from B to A times by the velocity in A. So the direction of these vectors is different. The velocity in A is not the same direction as velocity in B, but the magnitude will be the same. Another important property is that multiplying rotation matrices makes another rotation matrix. So we have a rotation from 1 to 2 and a rotation from 2 to 3. Then the rotation from 1 to 3 is 1 to 2 times 2 to 3. And notice again the diagonal elements here line up. And we're left with 1 and 3, so the rotation from 1 to 3. So let's go and apply our property of the rotation matrix by its transposed. R1 to 3 by R1 to 3 transposed will be this. And expanding this, we get R1 to 2 transposed in the middle by R1 to 2. And we know this will give the identity matrix. And then we have R2 to 3 transposed by R2 to 3, which again, we know is the identity matrix. So this new matrix we formulated from two rotations, again, has the property of being orthogonal. And then the determinant of this matrix we formulated is given by the determinant of 1 to 2 and 2 to 3, which we can split. And we know that the determinant of a rotation matrix is 1. So the determinant of this new matrix we formulated is, again, 1. So 
this matrix R1 to 3 is in the special orthogonal group. It is another rotation matrix. So we return to this problem of how should the robot orient its end effector. So first we want to chain the relevant rotation matrices. So we want to get the rotation from the end effector to the object and we chain them like so. We have the rotation from end effector to the base, the rotation from the base to the inertial frame, rotation from inertial frame to the camera frame, and rotation from the camera frame to the object. And notice that I've written it so that the diagonal elements will line up and cancel out and we're left with rotation from end effector to object. Then we just need to transpose or invert the re relevant rotations to get the opposite direction. So notice that we have end effector to base, which is just base to end effector transpose. And base to inertial is just inertial to base transposed. So to summarize this lecture of rotation matrices, rotations describe relative orientation between reference frames. The rotation matrix is a concatenation of unit vectors. The rotation matrix is in the special orthogonal group, and its transpose is equal to its inverse. The Euclidean norm of a rotation matrix is 1, and the determinant of a rotation matrix is 1. The magnitude of a vector is invariant under rotation, and multiplying two rotations makes another rotation. Lastly, the reverse of a rotation is equal to its transpose or inverse.